This webinar is to provide health researchers with an overview of the new European General Data Protection Regulation and the Irish Data Protection Legislation that has recently come into force, particularly as it affects health research. The presentation focuses mainly on the new research regulations which were signed by the Minister for Health on the 7th of August 2018 and which came into effect on the following day, the 8th of August. This presentation will take approximately 30 minutes of your time. During the presentation, I will first give a brief overview of GDPR and its context within the wider right to privacy, and also see how it fits within the Irish legal context. Next, I will introduce you to the new health research regulations. Under this section, we will discuss the purpose of the new regulations, what the term suitable and specific measures means, and we will discuss what consent means in the context both of GDPR and the new regulations. We will also look at the concept of a consent declaration, what this means, when it might apply, and who will be responsible for issuing such declarations. I will then look at the role of the HRB with respect to the health research regulations and provide you with some information as to what actions you as researchers can start to implement straight away. And I will also give you links to where you can find further guidance and information. Firstly, what is GDPR? As many of you will already know, GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation, and it is the new European regulation governing data protection that came into effect across Europe on the 25th of May of this year. The GDPR governs the collection, use and storage of all personal data of living individuals, and it replaces the previous Data Protection Directive from 1995. The primary objectives of GDPR are to strengthen the rights of individuals with respect to the processing of their personal data by other people and by organisations and to streamline the rules and regulations on data processing across the whole of the, EU, of the EU. A key difference between GDPR and the EU's previous data protection directive is that GDPR became law in all of the European member states on the 25th of May and it does not require any further legislation to be enacted in the various member states to have effect. It's important to note that pri uh, data protection is in fact part of a much wider right to privacy. In Ireland, this right to privacy is recognised as a personal right in the Irish Constitution. It is also a fundamental human right under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and in the EU's Charter of Fundamental Rights and in its Foundational Treaty. So it's not surprising that there are strong human rights principles underpinning the GDPR. However, as with many rights, the right to privacy is not an absolute one, and more often than not, it must be balanced against other rights. For example, the right to life, freedom of expression, and indeed against a wider public interest or societal good. When such balancing must be done, the interference with the right to privacy should only be so far as is necessary and in a manner that is proportionate to the desired objective. So what changes has GDPR introduced? And the answer really is not a lot. Essentially, all of the core principles of the previous directive have been reiterated in GDPR. For example, necessity, where one should collect, store and process only the personal data that you need in order to achieve your objectives. And data minimization, where you should identify the minimum amount of personal data and store this for the least amount of time. This corresponds with the previous directive's principles of adequacy. Transparency is a key requirement under GDPR. It underpins the individual's right to be informed of what data you are holding about them and what you are doing about that data. And of course, consent, which has always been a key tenant of data protection. A new aspect of GDPR are the concepts of privacy by design and privacy by default. Privacy by design is the idea that privacy is considered from the outset of a project right throughout its lifetime and through to end of project considerations. In other words, decisions about what to do with the data at the end of the project. Privacy by default is the idea that any data processing, the default, sh the default settings should always be the most privacy friendly ones. Some other changes are that GDPR has a broader scope. So for example, it has a broader definition of personal data and it also has a broader territorial reach. 
GDPR also strengthens existing rights and provides for a number of new rights in order to give individuals more control over the use and storage of their personal data by individuals or organizations. So, for example, the right to be forgotten or the right to erasure is one of the new rights that's included in GDPR. There are also stricter notification requirements when there are instances of a data breach. And perhaps most importantly, GDPR introduces significant penalties for data protection breaches, giving much more legal impact compared to previous data protection legislation. Although the GDPR is, an over, is the overarching European law, which has direct effect in Ireland for the most part, there are some parts of GDPR where the member states are allowed discretion as to how GDPR should be implemented in their specific context. Ireland has done this by enacting the new Data Protection Act 2018, which also came into a force on the 25th of May, and specifically in the context of health research, by means of introducing the new Health Research Regulations 2018, which came into force on the 8th of August. The health research regulations are actually formally called the Data Protection Act 2018, Section 36 to Health Research Regulations 2018. But as this is quite a long and complicated title, we will use the shorthand version throughout this talk. The regulations are a statutory instru instrument, which is the principal type of delegated legislation made by a minister and his or her department. So in this case, the health research regulations are called Statutory Instrument, or SI, number 314, made in 2018. So what is the purpose of the new health research regulations? Essentially, the new health research regulations describe a number of suitable and specific measures that must be put in place by researchers and research organisations in order to safeguard the fundamental rights and freedoms of individuals whose personal data are being used for the purposes of health research. These suitable and specific measures are essentially a codification of what is already well-established good research practices and information governance principles. Notably, the regulations make explicit consent the default position when processing personal data. And personal data in the context of GDPR and health research regulations include all health-related data, biometric and genetic data, as well as pseudo-anonymized personal data of living people. It does not apply to fully anonymized data, which is outside the scope of GDPR, nor does it apply to the personal data of people who are deceased. The regulations apply to all health research, regardless of who's funding the research, where it has been conducted, or indeed by whom. The regulations outline five suitable and specific measures that must be in place when a researcher is processing data for health research purposes. These are, firstly, that the data collected and the processing of that data are limited to what is necessary to achieve the objectives of the research, and that the data processing must not cause damage or distress to the person or persons whose data you are using. Second. The regulations outline a range of governance structures that must be in place. These include things like having ethical approval, knowing who the data controller is, and if relevant, identifying any data processors. If there's more than one data controller, you must identify them all, and you must have a clear delineation of responsibilities between the data controllers so you know who's doing what, when, and under what circumstances. You also need to be able to identify who's providing the funding for the research, and where relevant with whom you intend to share the data. And in addition, there is a mandatory requirement to provide data protection training to individuals who are engaged in the health research. Thirdly, the regulations describe a range of processes and procedures that must be in place. These include processes to assess the data protection implications of the proposed research, and for high-risk situations, a data protection privacy impact assessment must be carried out. You must be able to demonstrate that the data you are using are the least amount required for the work that you are doing and that you are keeping that data for the minimum amount of time. In other words, that you are actually complying with the data minimization principle. You must have control procedures to log and limit access to the personal data undergoing processing, 
in order to prevent unauthorized access to that data or any other processing of that data. You must have adequate security measures to protect the personal data. And you must have an end of project plan for the handling of the data when the research is finished. For example, are you going to anonymize the data, archive it for a further period of time, or should the data be destroyed or deleted? And under processes and procedures is a requirement for any other technical or organizational measures that are required to ensure the processing is carried out in accordance with GDPR. The key point here is accountability. You must be able to demonstrate that you are compliant with GDPR and the new health research regulations. And part of this is that you have the processes and procedures in place to help you ensure and that can verify that you are compliant with GDPR throughout the lifetime of the project. Transparency is the fourth suitable and specific measure and it is a key principle of GDPR. So it is important that you can demonstrate that you are informing individuals about how their data are being used. And this may include information that you are providing on a consent form, or it may be that you are using notices to tell people what you're doing with their data on websites or on notices in public areas. And indeed, it might include all of these uh, procedures. Finally, but by no means least, the health research regulations require that you obtain the explicit consent of the individual whose data you are using. The suitable and specific measures mandated by the health research regulations now make it a legal obligation to follow what is in fact already well-established international best practice guidelines for managing personal data. The regulations bring certainty, consistency and clarity to the data protection rules governing the processing of personal data for health research purposes and make explicit consent a default safeguard. The regulations are an important measure that seek to ensure that patients, or indeed anyone else whose data are being used, can trust researchers and the health research system generally when their data are being processed for research purposes. This trust is critical to ensure ensuring a vibrant, research and evidence-led, innovative and well-regulated health research sector that enjoys public confidence and support. So given that consent lies at the heart of GDPR and the new health research regulations, we should talk a little bit more about what this means. Consent under GDPR means any freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous indication of the data subject's wishes by which he or she, by a statement or by clear affirmative action, signifies agreement to the processing of their personal data. It is important to note that there is really essentially no difference between the standard of consent required for GDPR and that which was required by the previous Data Protection Directive. You can see from the terms used here that to describe consent in the GDPR regulation, freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous were all present in the previous 1995 directive also. So what else does GDPR say about consent? According to GDPR, valid consent needs to be unbundled, i.e. separate from other terms and conditions. It must be freely given, so it must be a genuine choice for the individual involved and it must not be a precondition of any service. This is particularly relevant in the case of health research, where a patient may feel under pressure to give consent to a doctor on whom they are reliant for their health care. Consent must be an active choice for the individual giving consent. Silence, pre-ticked boxes or inactivity should not be viewed to constitute consent. It must be granular. So you must allow individuals the option to consent to specific types of data processing. A generic catch-all consent is not sufficient. This is also very relevant in the case of research, where it may not always be easy to define all of the specific purposes of the data, pro uh, the data processing proposed at the outset. You must be able to name all of the organisations and third parties that are relying on your consent. You cannot use categories of third party organisations. And you must keep records to demonstrate an individual's consent, including what they were told, when and how they consented, even where that consent is given orally. And of course, 
Consent should be as easy to give, as easy to withdraw as it is to give. You must tell people that they have the right, the right to withdraw their consent at any time and how to do this. And you must also have processes in place that ensure where, where consent is withdrawn, that this is actually implemented. So consent may be provided by the data subject in written, electronic or oral form. But regardless of what form it is given, it needs to be verifiable. Therefore, even where consent is given verbally, records must be kept so that that consent is verified. Even though GDPR and the health research regulations both use the term explicit consent, this is not actually defined. It would seem that explicit consent is of a higher standard of consent than consent on its own. The main difference seems to be one of certainty, i.e. that there's absolutely no ambiguity as to whether consent is present or not for a particular data processing that is being undertaken. Otherwise, all of the other characteristics for consent are equally required for explicit consent. As you may know, GDPR requires that all data processing must have a valid legal basis for it to be legal. Consent is just one of GDPR's six legal bases. In addition, Article 9 of GDPR outlines 10 conditions, at least one of which must be met when processing special categories of personal data. Health data fall within the definition of special categories of personal data and explicit consent is one of the Article 9 conditions that may be met when processing special categories of personal data. However, there may be occasions when a researcher is processing health data that do not have consent either as a legal basis or as an Article 9 condition. The health research regulations require explicit consent is obtained from the individual regardless of what legal basis or Article 9 condition that you are relying upon when you are processing that individual's personal data for health research purposes. There is of course a recognition that it may not always be possible to obtain the explicit consent of the individual to use their data or that in some circumstances, obtaining the consent of the individual might in fact be prejudicial to the outcome of the research. In such circumstances, the regulations allow that a declaration may be made that the explicit consent of the individual whose data will be or are already being used, being processed, is not required. This is termed a consent declaration. It is expected that the circumstances will be very much the exception rather than the rule. So when might a consent declaration be made? For research that has not already commenced, then a researcher may apply for a consent declaration if he or she believes that the public interest in their proposed research outweighs to a significant degree the public interest in requiring the explicit consent of the individual whose data are to be processed. For research that is currently ongoing, a researcher may apply for a limited period to obtain a consent declaration if they have already obtained consent from the individual or individuals involved and that that consent complies with the previous data protection legislation, that is the 1995 Protect, uh, data Protection Directive and the related Irish Data Protection Legislation, or if they do not have consent and they believe that the public interest of their research outweighs to a significant degree the public interest in requiring the explicit consent of the individual whose data are being processed. It's important to recognise that obtaining a consent declaration is not a fix for past poor research practices where consent may not have been obtained at all or where the consent obtained does not relate to the specific research being conducted. In addition, research ethics committees have historically and in good faith issued consent waivers under certain circumstances. Unfortunately, research ethics committee consent waivers do not have any legal standing in the context of GDPR and the new health research regulations, nor did they have any legal standing in the context of the previous Data Protection Directive and the Irish legislation. The health research regulations specify that new research is all research that commences on or after the 8th of August 2018, that is the date the regulations came into effect.
The date that the health research regulations use as a reference point is the date of the letter awarding ethical approval to the project issued by a research ethics committee. A health research project is current or ongoing if it is underway on or before the 7th of August 2018. Again, the reference date is the date of the letter from the Research Ethics Committee awarding ethical approval to the proposed research. For current research, there is a nine-month period of tr transition up until the 30th of April 2019 to allow researchers reach the consent standard laid down by the GDPR and the new health research regulations, or alternatively, and if appropriate, to apply for a consent declaration if the researchers believe that the research in question meets the required eligibility criteria outlined in the regulations. So who makes the consent declaration? Well, consent declarations will be made by a new statutory committee, which will be appointed by the Minister for Health. This new committee will be the Health Research Consent Declaration Committee. It will have between 15 and 21 members, including a chairperson and two deputy chairpersons. The committee members will include persons that have knowledge of data protection law, research ethics and other skills relevant to health research and health care. It will also have representatives from the research community as well as lay members whose role it is is to represent the interests of individuals whose data may be used and the interests of the public generally. The Health Research Consent Declaration Committee may make a consent declaration may make a consent declaration subject to conditions to protect the interests of an individual likely to be affected by the consent declaration, refuse to make a consent declaration, revoke a consent declaration already in effect, or request additional information or consult with any person who it believes can assist it in its deliberations. It will also be possible to appeal decisions of the Health Research Consent Declaration Committee. Appeals will be heard by an independent committee appointed by the Minister as and when required and which will not involve any member of the Health Research Consent Declaration Committee. The Health Research, committee, uh, the Health Research uh, Consent Declaration Committee will be supported by a secretariat that is being provided by a new team within the HRB. The Secretariat will provide a centre point of contact and a help desk for researchers and the public at large. It will support the committee's work and manage the process for applying for consent declarations. It will follow up on any consent declarations that have been made. It will establish guidelines and it will coordinate the logistics of the committee, training, CPD activities and so on in conjunction with the committee itself. What are the timelines involved? Firstly, it is expected that the Minister will appoint the Chairperson, Deputy Chairpersons and other members of the Health Research Consent Declaration Committee over the coming months and that the committee will be in place by October 2018. The HRB is currently engaged in a process to recruit a new Secretariat team and it too is expected to be in place around the same time. The committee will be open for business for applications in respect of new research projects from this time onwards. For current or ongoing research projects, there is a short transitional period to allow researchers bring their current consent into line with GDPR standards or alternatively to seek a consent declaration. The transitional period is open for applications up until the 30th of April 2019. So what is the role of the HRB in the meantime? As a key funder of health-related research, the HRB is obviously very keen to ensure that the health research community are fully aware of GDPR and the new health research regulations and of the data protection obligations that are now legal obligations and not just guidelines. As part of this, we've prepared a significant amount of guidance about GDPR and about the new regulations and how these regulations impact on the area of health research specifically and we encourage you as health researchers to take a close look at these web pages. We aim to make the information as accessible as possible to a non-legal person. We also expect to receive many queries about the new research regulations from the community. In order to manage this, we have developed an online query form to capture queries from the community. We will not provide answers to individuals. This is to ensure that our responses are consistent and that the information is available to everyone.
To do this, we have developed a Health Research Regulations 2018 FAQ page, which we will post answers, uh, where we will post answers to the questions that we get. This is already up and running and we will continue to update it weekly from here on. In the meantime, the HRB is also responsible for putting the Consent Declaration Committee's Secretariat in place and preparations for the recruitment process for this are already underway. But while the HRB will do its best to answer questions from the community about the new research regulations, it is likely we will not have answers to all of the questions that will arise. This is because, in some instances, queries can only be answered when the committee is established and working. For example, the, sum, the meaning of some terms in GDPR and the new regulations may only become clear over time as precedents are set by the new declaration, uh, Consent Declaration Committee. So, in particular, the HRB cannot provide advice as to whether a particular research project or consent process is compliant with GDPR or with the previous data protection legislation. For this, you should consult your organization's data protection officer. Nor can we provide any advice as to whether a research project is of sufficient public interest to warrant the granting of a consent declaration. This is the remit of the new committee and the HRB cannot preempt their decisions. As part of its guidance on the new health research regulations, the HRB has developed a decision tree to help you determine whether or not you should seek a consent declaration from the the Consent Declaration Committee, and if yes, whether or not you should be seeking that declaration as a new research project or as a current research project under the transitional arrangements. The decision tree also alerts you to a number of preliminary steps that must be undertaken prior to any application being made to the committee. You can access the decision tree on the HRB's web pages at the following link. So what can you be doing now? Firstly, you should make sure that you, and if you're a principal investigator, you need to make sure that members of your research team are aware of and are briefed on your data protection obligations under GDPR and the new health research regulations. You can find accessible non-legalese information about GDPR and the new regulations on the Health Research uh, Board's website under the funding section with the heading GDPR Guidance for Researchers. You should consider all of the research projects that you have ongoing and see whether or not you are processing personal data. If yes, you should alert your data protection officer and make an appointment with them to discuss what you are doing and if there are any data protection issues that you need to be concerned with. Consult the HRB's decision tree if you think you may need to seek a consent declaration. Consider doing a data protection impact assessment. A data protection impact assessment must be undertaken for all data processing that has been undertaken in the health research domain. And a formal data protection impact assessment must be done where there is a high risk to individuals' privacy rights. If, you're actually, if you are thinking of making an application to the Consent Declaration Committee, you will have to submit a copy of this data protection impact assessment as part of your application. Can you anonymize your data? If this is possible, especially where you're dealing with older sets of data, then try to do so. Anonymized data does not fall within the remit of the GDPR or of the health research regulations, and so it makes life much easier for you if you can do this. If you have an ongoing research project for which you have obtained consent in line with the previous 1995 Data Protection Directive, then make efforts to contact people involved to get their explicit consent again in line with the new GDPR. If you get this for everyone, then you will be compliant straight away. If you can only get it for some, but not for everyone, then you can apply to the Consent Declaration Committee under the transitional arrangements to get a consent declaration for the remaining cohort. But you will have to demonstrate that you tried to get reconsent regardless. Finally, if you have queries, send your queries to the Health Research Regulations 2018 online query form. And don't forget to check the Health Research Regulations FAQ regularly for updated information. I hope this webinar has been a helpful introduction for you to the GDPR and the new Health Research Regulations 2018. For more information, please go to the HRB's guidance on GDPR, where you will find the new regulations also. And this can be found at the following link.
Thank you for your time and your attention.